Okay guys, welcome to Eternal Flame News. I know this has been a weird starting of today's programming. Uh, looks like some weird stuff's going on with the camera, how it's been moved again. I don't know why it moved, but anyway, we'll have to get that figured out here in a minute. Uh, breaking news that we want to cover, it's kind of funny, there's a cop car coming. That's breaking news here locally. Um, we've been trying to cover the uh, prostitution scandal with the Secret Service, like what is really going on. Uh, it's gone from being over, you know, multiple countries now they're, they're looking into uh, from the Europe world to now Central America and people have lost security clearances to people losing other things. It's getting to a point where um, I'm concerned how much more is going to be revealed. Not that it's a bad thing that this stuff is being revealed. Um, how much more from... How much is our government of, uh, yeah, employees how much, getting involved in sex trafficking? Yeah, how much, <laughs> how much and more is this... more than what else. You know, that's what I'm concerned about. What on the world are we actually doing? It, it ends up putting me to some kind of point that I'm, I'm at a loss for words. You know, it's just something I just wanted to talk about and discuss just quickly and then I've been looking at USGS for any updates on the Mexico uh, possible eruption what's crazy USGS is not really showing anything about the volcano as per the whole map but um, I have some stuff I can show you from the MSNBC's blog about the volcano and uh, it captures an unceasing eruption is what they're saying um, NASA actually saw uh, the image this is on the 26th they saw the image coming in there's like a video from NASA showing uh, how big is it here um, second to Mexico no that's not the one I was looking at but yeah the what we're worried about though when it comes to this volcano is we're concerned whether or not uh, and the fact it's been erupting the low level since 2005 like I said USGS and I'll pull it up doesn't really have anything pertaining if if it if it's if it's really a big deal or not or how we are trying to risk managemently I guess is the word um, about the volcanic activity. Now I wanted to share with you, since we're talking about volcanoes, um, I'm going to pull up this map and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it here. Um, what's cool is it's like a full world map and I'm going to zoom it out before I pull it up on the screen for you guys. You need to be able to see um, exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, if I can get this uh, screen capture thing to work. Um, here is what I'm talking about. I'm just going to have this full screen. This is the volcanoes.usgs.gov. U.S. volcanoes and current activity alerts. All the gray ones in the, in the U.S. are the unassigned, so I'm going to click off of those. The green ones are the ones that are normal, and here's the elevated ones. Uh, we also need to be paying attention to, yes, this is Hawaii. The level of concern and then the Aleutian Islands the one up here but you see this triangle um, for those of you that uh, have been interested in the scientific side of things this is known as the ring of fire and I'm kinda tracing it out in my hand what it is is the two tectonic plates connecting together my wife is probably gonna go back and listen to this video and like the fact that I said tectonic plates but what happens is when you have two continents rubbed together, it creates friction and that creates cause, as you know, a volcano, which is the Earth's crust breaking open and the lava underneath coming out because of the two plates coming together. It's kind of like making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Put it on the floor and step on it and it, all the jelly and stuff comes out the edge. It's pretty much the same thing. I'm saying that in a simple man's term, I know. But we're concerned also about what might happen with Mexico because of the, amount, the thousands of people that could be affected. And even better yet, um, there, there's been some videos going around for some activity 
within these unassigned in New Mexico and what would happen if America got hit by a volcano. We were talking about this the other day because of tsunamis and everything. Like, what would happen next? How would we be able to uh, move forward? And uh, it really concerned me that we are in this position of insaneness. Uh, but that's the way it is. More breaking news for you guys that watch this program. Um, this is an adult content, adult content story. Turn it off. This part you can't watch. Just fast forward a couple of minutes. Uh, campus sponsored talk by gender uh, queer porn star raises eyebrows at Williams College. Porn star Jiz Lee at the Parisky Auditorium Friday, today at 7 p.m. right now, is talking about film screening and lecture with gender queer porn star Jiz Lee. This is breaking news. I didn't want to talk about it before. The screening is at 7 p.m., so you're watching pornography at 7 p.m., and then at 8, you get to sit here and have a conversation with, you know, what's it like to be a lesbian, and, uh, I guess in the film world. I'm sitting there scratching my head, uh, what in the world? I mean, of course, this is a private, instati uh, private institution in Western Massachusetts. Uh, she's considered an award-winning genderqueer performer, author, artist, and pleasure activist. Um, what they're wanting to talk about here is quite simple. Porn. Uh, why are we doing this? Because the world wants to get darker. We talked about this a few years ago. At Ohio University in Athens had the, uh, another, uh, outrageous porn star turned activist, turned, uh, wants to marry the earth with sex and ecology. Um, this is just more of that same pattern that we keep running into of... Why is this one view being promoted? Like, I wrote an article, and I've been talking to different people on campus, and it seems that when you want to talk about being a Christian, you want to talk about your, your views about Jesus Christ or whatnot, they turn around and say, that's not relevant today. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. And if you don't write articles, I know when I was in high school, and I know across the country, there have been students at the junior high, high school, and college university levels that are standing up for the truth of Jesus Christ. To the point, they'll be given a, um, a paper to write, and they'll say, I'm not going to write this, and it gets in the mainstream media, and the next thing you know, they either fail the course because they get an F in the paper, or they end up getting another assignment. I don't understand why we have to get so intently insane when it comes to this information. Um, it, it bothers me so much that uh, this keeps happening, this pattern of you know, living in the world, but I mean, of course, you know, that's what we have to do as Christians. How do we live in the world with everything going on? It's just something we have to give action. So I'm asking you to pray for Massachusetts right now, because Massachusetts is college. There's kids there, and I don't even know if they're going to screen. I said this in my last event. They didn't screen the ages. If you were 17, you're in college, you could go to that. They didn't check your ID at the door. It's 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 bothersome to me. I don't like it. Now on to the biggest story of the day. Um, this is the, the preview video that we talked about. The emergency of the Russian stock market, MySex, uh, closed indefinitely. Entire cabinet of the Netherlands uh, issued below. Now here's the thing. I'm going to click this link and it's going to actually go here. For those who are interested, this is the actual MySex group, RTS group. Uh, this is posted uh, over the week. And I'm just going to zoom in, and I want you guys, because I had a comment on my Facebook saying that this was just a right-wing, uh, made-up story. No, this is the official website. I'm not making it up. It goes to rts.mysex.ru. You do a search for my sex group. It goes here. What happened is the technical suspension of training to be extended. The situation recognized as an emergency. Further actions will be announced shortly. Now, when we go into the middle frame of their sections here, and I'll, I'll explain this later, you'll find out, no, it's not still down. And yeah, all this is in Russian. No, I don't know Russian. But also, check this out. On the 24th as well, they talk about the measures that they had to take for what happened on the 23rd at 5.40 p.m. Uh, by the market participants ceased. Um, too many times, um, too much has happened. 
in in the world in the realm and they apologize to their trading members and they believe intends to attack and examine the, the causes of the disruption uh, it, this is what I'm concerned about if it could happen in Russia can't this happen anywhere else can't this um, cause many 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 things to fall apart and we just you know become lesser of a, of a quality people that's what I'm really worried about. I'm worried about so many different things and so many different uh, factions. Uh, I want to cover this a little bit more in depth. Now, when you go to Bloomberg, Bloomberg talked about on the 23rd about how their technical halt would happen. Now, what would happen, like I said, if this happened in the United States? Uh, could we respond fast enough? Would we be able to not let this uh, affect the whole markets? Or will this continually uh, fall to the wayside? Right. Uh, or, or not? Um, I was gonna say show proof that the art Bloomberg did right. Yeah, and here's the thing: people were saying we we were lying. Yeah, somebody said I was lying that this never happened. Here's Bloomberg, and you know I can I can. Jeremy, you just click this. Don't worry, they don't see it yet. It's okay. Um, here it is, Bloomberg, and I typed it in my screen. Bloomberg News, Bloomberg, right here. My six RTX exchange resumes trade in Moscow after technical halt. And, and like I said, I covered this. This is one of the few that covered it. Um, we posted this before, I think, their 154 p.m. article or shortly afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, this is why I wanted to cover it. It's not the end of the world. It's just something that happened. But at the same time, which I thought was quite interesting, Wall Street Journal Europe, here it is, Wall Street Journal Europe, uh, covers the Prime Minister resigns. And you're like, what? Amsterdam. What Amsterdam. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte and his cabinet, the entire cabinet, resigned Monday after his ruling coalition lost support of a populist party on disagreements over new measures to shrink the budget. Now, this is what um, we we are concerned about. What well, if this happened right here in the United States? You know, every six months to three months, we keep hearing about our federal budget and how Republicans and Democrats can't get along. And they can't vote for anything, and they don't want to do anything, and blah, 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 blah. This is exactly what could happen. And you know what? I think it's kind of good, though. They can't make up the mind and get the crap out of the way. That's what I say. But at the same point, this is going to cause chaos and discord. Do we really want all this chaos and discord? Do we really want a situation where so much falls apart to the wayside that we can't get things done, that we can't be the way we need to be? Um, I'm worried. I'm extremely, intently worried that um, this is the way it goes. And for those of you who want to know exactly what, what was said from the Wall Street Journal, I'm going to read it because I, co I copied the little, the little paragraph and shared it. Um, what is interesting about this, uh, is there a key ally of Germany, that, which is what's pointed in, in the Wall Street Journal, and one of the most supporters since Greece's debt problems. Now, um, we all know the European Union is having problems with our government. They're having problems with their their whole schematic of things. And we keep hearing more about Greece and we keep hearing about other rumors of other countries needing bailouts. <clears throat> the International Monetary Fund is wanting to try and funnel more, funny, uh, funnel more money into these countries. Then we hear the United States is trying to do it too. Are you seeing what's happening? Are we becoming more centralized? We're becoming more international. In other words, we're becoming a one world government in a way. Because why does it matter if Netherlands falls apart or if Greece falls apart? Why does the U.S. have to funnel everything? Why? Because we're all interconnected. I can sit here and draw lines to each bank. A Bank of America connected to Greece, connected to you know Wall Street, blah, 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 blah. They're all interconnected. Why? Because what we've done is in an international stock exchange, I don't care if it's S&P 500 or NASDAQ, you have one person, they'll come in and they'll place a bid for a stock at $500. Then this other company will come in, connected to Greece. And all the banks are just trading one another intently to where the, the line is completely blurred at this point of who owns what. So when one falls, they all fall. It's kind of like a domino set. You've probably seen some videos on YouTube where all these meticulously they'll make this big design of dominoes and they thump one when they thump one it just goes through the whole set and it continually goes and goes and goes and goes and it never stops I'm like why why does this happen because we, we, we know 
what the Bible says in Revelation, how you know the rumors of wars and the rumors of, of, of so much discord and chaos continually happen, what can we do as Christians? What can we do to change the situation? It is not just only our responsibility as a Christian to pray for our nation, to pray for our leaders, because this stuff's going to happen. It's also our responsibility to get involved in different things. Some of you guys are really interested in the math world, really interested in accounting. You need to sit here and think for a moment, what can you do to make a difference? How can you actually go to that next step and transform your society as we know it today? Because that's one of the biggest issues I've seen. I've heard it from young people as, as young as 15. I've heard it 35-year-old people to 85-year-old people. I've heard this one excuse, and, it, and they'll say, Well, Miranda, it's just so much going on. I just don't know what to do. I can't do anything. I can't. It's just too much to think about. And I'm like, excuse me? Why? This is why, the, and we were talking about this in my communications class, uh, the, the silent actions is actually somebody standing by and allowing things to continually perpetuate and move into a direction that will blow your ever mind. And this is what I'm worried about. This is what I'm concerned about. Because too many times, too many people will not and cannot take this seriously. Then we go over here and we look at North Korea. For goodness sakes, North Korea. They keep threatening about this uh, nuclear bomb test. And, you know, Say, I, they're saying they could blow up you know, the U.S. and one strike. They could destroy the U.S. in one strike. They're, going, they're wanting to attack South Korea again and you know, they say that every, like every few months they're gonna destroy South Korea. And what's what's <clears throat> what's creepy is like um, there are new articles that you can look from all around the world. We can go to the Australian here. This is why I'm trying to get more international with what's happening and connecting it here. Why? Because this is what I this is what I do all day. I pay attention to this stuff. And the Australian over in Australia, they believe, and I've even seen this in the Huffington Post. They're saying this is a fake missile. It's just not going to work. How, many, how do we know for sure? How many more times? I mean, I mean that's the thing. Um, I do realize there's covert operations to uh, sabotage countries, missiles, and military defenses with small strategic teams in different locations, above top secret stuff, people that you know you'll never meet. Uh, things that I was involved in that you'll never know about, um, and they'll and they'll take care of these things. But at the same point, this is something we have to be careful of. This is the things that we need to wake up about. This is how we need to fundamentally stop allowing a radicalized left or right situation, something that wants to go completely against Jesus Christ. And I've seen people on the right and the left do it. That's the problem. You know, as myself, I believe being a Christian. You're not a right or a left. You're in your own category. You're an, ex you know, it's just the way I feel. Now on to, and, and this, this tops the cake. This story, um, really, is fundamentally transforming what's happening. For those of you who have, have followed through with watching Eternal Flame News, we did do a massive coverage of the Freedom Rally. And the HHS mandate, and we covered Twitter Wasn't posts that and so on. Live. And it was James C. Live. We talked about it on James C. Live and Eternal Flame News about how um, people are trying to come into power and trying to redefine what abortion means. They're trying to not only legalize it, but just. It is legalized already. Trying to legalize all the forms of abortion. Because there are people right now who will tell you, and this, this really upsets me, there's someone right now in power in Congress and elsewhere at colleges all across the globe, they will tell you to your face that you can abort a baby after it's born. After it's born, excuse me? Now I have to reference to you again, while, 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 and I would love to ask a President Obama's uh, wife here this question. So if I pull out a gun and I shoot you in the head and the belly and you are one, you are nine days pregnant, what will I be charged with? Quite interesting enough, I'm not going to kill the president, so don't worry, or the president's wife. I'm not doing that. This is an analogy, Secret Service, who watches me. 
Um, do you realize the rules and regulations, depending on where you live... No, it's... And where it happens. No, it depends on where you live. Um, the majority of the time, when a woman that is pregnant is murdered, I don't care where it is, every court case across the United States that has ever happened, that it is it considered a double homicide or a double murder. A double homicide or a double murder. Are you hearing this? A double homicide <clears throat> or a double murder. If a person goes and kills a pregnant woman, it is considered a double homicide or a double murder. But if a woman goes and kills her kills her own baby mm -hmm. because she has a choice. Oh yeah. That's not life. So th so let me re let's say this again. Miranda just said it very clearly that if a woman is killed and it can be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, meaning this woman has had either sexual intercourse or has been in vitro, or the, you know, she's stimulated. pregnant. She's pregnant. They want to redefine what the word pregnancy means. And furthermore, if you kill a pregnant woman, you are charged with two. Yes, two. Two crimes of possible homicide, manslaughter, as known as murder. But I can sit here and give you a piece of paper, tell you to go to Planned Parenthood, and what can happen? You can go and have someone stick a, a stick inside of you and scrape this out, chop it up into bits. Because my ex-girlfriend, she assisted abortion. She watched it. They just go in there and scoop it out, put it in a vacuum, suck it out, whatever, and then you chop it up to bits, and then you give it to this nice little medical assistant person to go clean the utensils and throw away the baby into the disposable box. And you see little fingers, and little toes, and little eyeballs, sometimes hair. But that's not a baby. It's, it, oh, it's not a baby. It's, it's, it's a parasite. Oh, really? So I've asked people, at what point does a parasite become a living organism that's connected to you, that has its own genetic complex code, and is therefore listed as a human being? At what point... In the birth process, back up in the pregnancy process, back up to the consummation of a sexual act, this a sperm and the egg meeting being fertilized, not become an actual. Yeah, yeah, it makes me sick. It makes me angry. You know that all this mess keeps happening. We keep trying to redefine a truth. That's the thing about college. Um, I, I found out a long time ago when you start towards your bachelor degree or if you start towards your master degree, what happens is you're supposed to poke a hole into the earth, meaning redefine what we already know or find out something that no one already knows. Those are the two options of what you're supposed to do if you want to have a PhD. Prove something that doesn't exist or re-prove a theory that already exists and so it's false. That's, that, that sums up college in a nutshell. Well, here's another term. Speak about redefining things and redefining what we think is truth or not. Uh, the Christian Post is covered, and this this kind of uh, makes sense to me because yes, I have uh, investigated this church when I was homeless. Uh, I have gone there a few times myself. I've seen their limousines lined with alcohol and lined with cigarettes and so on and so forth. Giving to people at a homeless shelter. Yeah, I'm going ahead and saying it. But most people were there for rehab. And thought that was the best thing since sliced bread. Is to offer homeless people a chance to sit in a limousine. Yes, I'm talking about Lakewood. I've met him. I've shaken his hand. I've met his wife. I've even met his grandmother. They've all personally have prayed with me. Yes, I'll admit that. You want to use that against me? Go ahead. The reason why I'm talking about this because this is another story of redefining decisions and this is something most Americans I think can't answer either. Is President-elect Obama and Mitt Romney a Mormon and Obama a Protestant? Are they considered Christians or not? Now I've talked to my wife about this story. And I have to say yes and no at the same time. I can't give you no or yes. But since I say no and yes, that means my answer at the end would have to be no. The reason why I'd have to say both is because when you get involved in politics, and I've been involved in politics, uh, I was talking to Miranda about this, you end up facing decisions 
where you have to make choices for people who aren't Christians and you have to make laws for people who aren't Christians. And I'm talking about decisions that are completely against the Christian faith. But then again, when you look at a story of Obama or Romney, uh, Romney is Mormon. I've actually attended a Mormon service. I've read the Mormon book. I have educated myself on this subject. And depending on which style of Mormon, normally you're going to say it's all of them. This will offend several viewers of mine, and I'm sorry I have to say it. It does not line up with the New Testament. It goes beyond the New Testament to where John Smith uh, has an experience with Jesus. And Jesus tells John Smith that you're going to have to redefine the founding fathers of America. And one day a new prophet will arise beyond Jesus. It refers to Jesus and Satan being brothers. I can kind of understand that point because when you look at the Old Testament and New, Jesus and Satan were in heaven at one point. But Jesus, Jesus is. But the, here's the thing. Satan was the morning star and then Jesus, it became and now is the morning star. But here's the interesting part. The only way you can say they're brothers is you would have to say that um, just like me being a Christian, Miranda being a Christian, we're brothers and sisters. But Jesus is God, so how can they be brothers? Here, here's, when, here. when Lucifer is a created being, yeah. God created So here's him, the thing. So. Here, you have God at the top, and you have the angels. Jesus wasn't an angel. Satan was an angel. God is Jesus. So there's not really a brotherly thing here, other than they're all amongst the same thing. But the way they literally define brother is brother, brother. Not as in, you know, God is Jesus. They actually redefine who Jesus is. What does they that try to do and turn, with the world map. I'm just pointing as as a height tier thing. You know, it's it's different things. You know, here we have God, and then here we have angels. Angels had Jesus. No, angels had Satan. Satan wanted to tell all the angels that he was God. He was kicked out of heaven because he was trying to become God. God is Jesus Christ, which we covered the other day. There's a new Bible who doesn't even want to use the word Christ or anointed one or whatever it is. We keep redefining the definitions of things here. This isn't my personal translation of the Bible. When I put in my personal thing, I start breaking down Mormonism and Christians and Protestants and, def and denominations. It's like, well, every the scriptures and say everybody's a Christian. But when I look at the Bible, the Bible... D does not have any of this tiered branch system. tiered branch system. It's just a straight line. It's either you're hot, you're cold, or there's no lukewarmness. Because the Bible says if you're lukewarm and you're undecisive and you split things like this, then he kicks you out of his mouth. So what do you think about Romney and Obama? Are either one of them a Christian? I'd say they both have Christian traits. I think they they wear, both do good things. I, like I've said, it seems like politicians put on the facade of a Christian to get votes a lot of times are they have to have some measure of faith because they have to reach the faith community okay? yeah they that's what they do but as the Bible says you will know them by their feet by the fruits by their fruits yeah and by their harvest so my show is not to sit here so and, and, and tell you that's where I'm gonna leave it because I'm not here to tell you uh, what to think. I'm here to tell you what how to apply says. the Bible to your life. I'm not going to tell you if Obama or Romney is a Christian or not. I'm telling you how to find out for yourself. Yes, you can know it by your fruits. You can know it by who you they associate with. Can we with. even say Joel Stan is a Christian? Yeah, you can even say that. Because he, he goes along with everything. He's, he's one that... He's all about feel-good sermons, and the Lord's going to give you all this stuff. And so we're faced with this situation. I can tell you what I believe. I believe it's really tough to tell. When it comes to someone who's a Mormon, uh, I've been told and taught, depending on which denomination I went to, specifically if I went to my Southern Baptist roots, I would be told all Mormons are cult members. They are all satanic. Um, if I go to the Joel Olstein church, I would be told, as you heard him mention, that uh, Obama and Romney are Christians. It really depends on where you're going. 
But does it really depend on where you're going? It shouldn't depend on where you're going. It should depend on the Word of God. The Word of God is the truth and by which we judge people. Yes, you have the right to judge people. Judge but with only righteousness. with righteous judgment. Not my opinion. I can't give you my opinion. I can only tell you what this Bible verse says. And we'll know who by their fruits. If he keeps sitting here, if Romney and Obama and Joel Osteen keep talking about redefining what homosexuality is. And supporting ab abortion. And because support Romney supports abortion. And you keep saying you want to support abortion, then I'm going to say, not that you're not a Christian, I'm going to say that your actions are not lining up with the Word of God. But then again, Anybody if I go to college, I'm going to be told, and I've been told many times in my college, well, the Bible says homosexuality is okay, and the Bible says it's okay to commit abortion. What yeah. part in the Bible are you reading? Luke, Matthew 4, 14, 18, 1 Corinthians 12, 22. I'm like, are you serious? Where's your Bible at? And they don't have a Bible. Mm. But they can tell me these things. That's what worries me. We're getting to, and you know what, what I just said, this last five minutes, depending on where I go, will be all over the mainstream media, will be all over the place saying that I'm a bigot and a racist and a stereotypical bias, blah, 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 blah. And well, I didn't call anybody that. I just said, this is what the Bible says. You make your own decision. You know, I mean, do people want to know what I think? Yeah, they do. They want to know. I tell people that privately. Give them the facts. You know, here's the facts. I'm like, if you do that, your actions are not lined up with the Word of God. And here's the problem. Everyone's under so much pressure today to perform. Because being a president or being at Joe Olstein's ministry level, it's about getting paid. It's a business. It's a business. I don't get paid for any of this stuff, man. It's not what we do here is not popular. Why? Because we're telling you what the Bible says, and you don't like it. I don't. I don't. I don't like the fact that that when when I line up with the Word of God, sometimes it doesn't feel good. But at the same point, I find ways to go out into this world and love people I don't agree with. I go love homosexuals, I go love lesbians and, 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 and murderers and rapists and all these people, and I love the crap out of them. I love the hell out of them. And why do I want to love the hell out of them? Because I don't want to see them to go to hell. I want to see them end up in heaven. I want them to see a reason why. So when it comes to these stories and these things, you have to be very, very careful of the words you say. You want to know why I'm not on mainstream media being called all these negative terms is because I have respect for these people who are living in sin. But I also will have no problem telling what sin is sin. And if you keep living that way, you can end up hell. Joe Olstein can go to hell. Joe Olstein can go to heaven. Romney can go to heaven. Romney can go to hell. Obama can go to hell. And Obama can be go to heaven. We all have the same choices. It's about free will. If he listens to this program today, if someone else listens to this program today, you have a choice today in what you're going to do next and how you live and how you look at the lenses of your life and the things that you're trying to do. Now, CNBC, check this out. UK slides back into recession and first double dip since the 1970s. Now, this is connected to our earlier story that I was talking about. Everybody's kind of wondering, well, why are you talking about this stuff? I said, you have to understand that you have to look at a bigger picture. We have Russia who had to have part of their stock market shut down for a while because of the, the economy. We had well, it was a technical glitch. Well, it was a technical glitch, but look what's happening. So, stock markets are being halted for a few hours. There's glitches going on. People could lose money, which could cause the economy to go down. Um, then we have the Dutch parliament completely resigning because they can't agree on a budget and now we have the UK slides into a second recession in less than a year. And everybody keeps telling us that we need to go to this one world government or excuse me progressive. Uh, let's become progressive. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like seriously? Well here's an example of progressivism they're allowing Sierra Law to take over in Europe, the European Union, which is the United, it's like the United, it's like the United States deciding to take over all of America. So that's the equivalent for those of you that are in the U.S. that don't understand the European Union. Imagine if 
We, as the as the United States, decided to want to bring in Canada, Central America, South America, and all their countries and make one currency. Yeah, they're looking at possibly doing that. So what's happening here in Britain? They're they're falling again. The Office of National Statistics said Britain's gross GDP, gross domestic product, fell 0.2 percent in the first quarter of 2012, after a 0.3 percent at the end of 11. They said most economics expected Britain's 2.4 trillion economy to continually grow, but it's not growing. They contracted 7.1% in the 2008-2009 recession, and it continually, continually declines. This is apparently the biggest fall since first quarter 2009. We are facing a situation, because here's the thing. The European Union, backed by the Russian stock market as well. At the same point, they also did some trade auctions in the Russian market recently, too, and some other stuff's going on. So the European Union falls. What happens? Greece and all these other countries are continually getting bailed out. They're not getting any better. The trading system isn't working. What are they wanting to try and do? Well, I'll tell you exactly what socialists and Marxists and progressives want to do. They want to continually make, and this goes to who? It goes back to George Soros. <laughs> yes, I said that. George Soros bought most of the stock of most of these other countries. Yes, he did. And then he turned around and sold it, and then he turned around and got other people to get involved to try and implode so he can make more money. That's not what you're going to Now, what's going to... And here's something I predict, and this is me being an economics, and, and yes, I've already taken economics in college, and I've taken some other classes, personally, and so on and so forth, to give you that I, I'm not an expert, but I have enough knowledge to be able to explain this to you. So if they continue in the decline, the other thing that happens is it goes back to the U.S. What happens in the United States? I predict in the next three months, you're going to see a headline in the United States where we're going to be printing more money. In fact, it happened just recently. Why? Because also the inflation record of our country is trying to change as well. And when these things happen, the prices of goods and services will continue to change. Theoretically, if we stay at a 10 to 20 year old old currency standard and just allow the inflation to grow and not print any more money, uh, we would have nine dollar gas. <laughs> we're, we're going when I there. start using the gas anal uh, analogy, people start understanding. Oh, and milk. And Mil milk. M milk is nearly the same price a gallon as gas. Yep, and it used to not be. It used to be a one to four ratio. This, and this is two percent. Now, two percent is normally what um, people in America drink. By you know, a gallon of 2% milk. We buy skim for health reasons, and it's a little bit cheaper. But the average American buys 2%. 2% is practically the same amount as a gallon of gas. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Do we have a shortage of cows on hand? No. I don't know. That's crazy, man. It's totally crazy, isn't it? I don't think so. Now, let's look at... Here's some more... It's uh, the same way we don't really have a shortage of gas. Yeah. It's just they're refusing to make more. Yeah, they're, they're, the gas issue is a matter of, it's just like diamonds. You have a few companies that have it, and then you have governments working against it, of being able to, you know, produce more, find out more, so on and so forth. And then the other side is, I kind of have to give uh, progressives this a little bit, you know, other technologies. They're only wanting to, to funnelize. Uh, green clean technologies. There's things that have been around for the last 20, 30 years. Hydrogen, all these other things. They've been around and the patents have been bought out by who? The people of the gas company. So we're back to that weirdness. Now on to other news and I have an update on this story. We talked about it in the preview video. Group On, which is a coupon daily deal site. Morality Media, we posted this twice on Eternal Flame News, talking about how they want to promote a porn company and there's been a boycott going around. We signed it, and I have some. What they're doing if you part of Groupon and you sign up for their deal of the day, you could win a tour to a porn studio. Not you know, and not just a regular porn no, studio. No, it's torture pornography. It's a torture pornography. Oh, and then no. here's the cool thing: we go to the Weekly Standard. Yeah, like here. I want to walk in there. If I'm going to walk into a porn studio, I'm going to be, I'm going to be clothed head to toe in a rubber suit, so I don't get a sexually transmitted disease. That's creepy. Now here's the thing. This is the good news about it. 
Portland pounces on Groupon. Oregon City stopping citizens for saving money in tough times. Wrong! No, you're not doing it for that reason. Here it is. Once again, the radical left does not want to point out that the average populace of people does not agree with sadomasochism. Mm -hmm. What is sadomasochism? It's where people go around beating people up, being tied and chained, and it's the feminization of men, where women take over. That second headline should say, Oregon City stopping citizens from stop, uh, stopping Groupon from exposing people to sadomasochism and illegal porn, basically. Because it, if they do that porn in, in that studio just the right way, it could be a crime. Mm -hmm. Because they're literally torturing people. It is a crime! So, so in the stance of trying to say, oh yeah, we're, 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 I understand they are jobs. Um, Who they are. The only thing that Groupon had to do to stop this from happening is drop the porn thing. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to have the porn thing, you would have to go to the National Standard of America and make the adult content button only and prove that that's an adult. That's the problem. It's publicly shown. Mm -hmm. And I'm sick and tired of having this crap thrown down our throats because what we're doing, and I've said this before, we are trying to legalize children to have sex because if you're going to allow a sexually orientated website to be completely free reign open for everyone, and, and we've already covered deal. in the UK and the US the average age of sexually active people is 11. 11 year olds that haven't even hit puberty are seeing sex acts and are starting to fill each other up in class. It's being covered all over the news, all over the United States. There's stories talking about people saying, well, this kid, this, this teacher has touched my kid. Or in this other story I saw recently, this kid had his head in the crotch of another kid. It was two boys and so on and so forth. Why do we keep doing this stuff? Why? Because there's a radical re-transformation story of trying to redefine sexual activity. The excuses, well, the Bible says 13, 14 year olds got married. So that's exactly the thing. They got married. They weren't having promiscuous sex. They were adults. They, they were their considered mindset adults was completely back then. different. And, and I just found an article the other day, and it, um, the average age, um, the age, age of an adult is now, I think it's 24. Um, it was on, a few, you know, not 18. And people are going to argue with me. What are you talking about? That's not possible. That's not the way it is. Oh, it's not? MSN now covers scientific proof that we become adults at age 24, not 18. Well, then we better change that voting law then. You know, age 24. I'm like, you're, you're not talking about this. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm like, I mean what I say when I mean how I say this redefining of who we are and what we're about is making me angry. I'm so sick and tired of everything getting transformed. It, you know, I understand that a long time ago we had more responsibility on children to grow up faster. Well, children have re they they were just given regular responsibilities to help take care of the house. They girls learned learn at a young age how to cook, how to clean, how to take yeah. care of a home, how to be a homemaker, how to sew. Yeah. I was never so taught now, how to sew. And boys, the father took them and showed them how to work with their hands, how to how to take care of the home on the outside, how to farm and well now they're trying to pass the law so you can't even do that. You can't teach your kid you can't have your kids helping them with the farm. What happened to responsibility? So now we have 18 year olds who should be adults aren't adults because they haven't been given enough responsibility in all honesty. Yep. So I'm going to show you the actual the original, the independent CO.UK covers teenage plus the new adolescence. Um, what worries me is I can tell you why it's the new adolescence. Now one thing I do have to admit, it is scientific proof that the gener gener generative cell structure of your body 
which explains why normally people, their hair recedes, and you get gray hair. Your cell structure, who you are as a human being. What happens? At age 24, that's when you start to die. Your cells, it doesn't matter who you are, it's been found out many times. That was age 30. It's 24 to 30. Okay. 20 to 30. They say 24 is the average. Um, that's why they're using well, the stat, know, 24. A, 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 woman, a, girl, a, wo a girl becomes a woman and but she see, stops growing at the age of 16. But, I but never, that doesn't matter. Now. But I, I am telling you, your body becomes an adult around the age of 16. A woman becomes an adult. Her body well, stops growing. She is at the point where she's not that's going to the change. Way, that's the way it used to be. Now, here's the outward point. A 16-year-old woman, the outwardly height... And the sexual activity organs stop growing at 16. For a man, it's 18. Yes. But for your body as a whole, for you have the strongest. I'm talking about a person becoming an adult. Well, that's what I'm talking about. But now we're saying changed. mentally, mentally, no, we're not adults no, no, anymore. No, this isn't mentally. This is for everything now. This but I can't, I'm not everything. talking about this. What I'm talking about is your article you were talking about, which you're leading into this. I am saying, we're saying now, well, people. People aren't adults until they're 24, but yet their bodies are adults at the coming into the age of 16 to 18. Why are we not preparing them for their bodies to be an adult? Why can't we prepare their minds too? Say when you're this age, you're you should be ready. I mean, I when I was 16, yeah, I was. What are you going to do with the rest of your life, Miranda? What are you going to do? Are you going to go to college? I mean, before I was even. I mean. Um, I had to grow. I mean, I, I mean, I had. I was cooking. I was cleaning. I was helping take care of the house. I was helping take care of the outside of the house since I was 12, 13 years old. So, and you, you had to grow up even faster than I did. So we know it is possible if, if we hold children responsible, and have a little discipline. What, what's wrong with that? Having structure. Well, like, like, I, like I'm trying to explain, and I, I, I don't know if you understand what I mean. The old standard was that the scientific proof was 16 years of age. The cell structure of a woman stopped at 16. Your cell structure died. It, it started to die at 16. And for a boy, your cell structure reached the heightened point it would ever become anything. Your height, your weight, your everything, all encompassing cell structure stopped at 18. New foundings, and I've known this for a while because... I've looked into this real in depth. Now the physical body will stop growing. The sexual organs and things, certain parts of your body stop at 16 and 18, but everything else doesn't stop until you're 24 because that's the age that you start to degenerate. You start to finally die. So we're starting to actually catch the age of when the body starts to physically deteriorate. And that's the point of 24. Now here's the interesting thing. Like we just said, biblical times, 13 years of age, which is half the age of 24, and I find this ironic, and I'm going to get somewhere with it. Uh, you want to know why? Because the average age of a person didn't get over the age of 30 mm -hmm. in the first several hundred years of Amer of the world, because when their cell structure started to die, they get the flu or a cold, and they would just die because there weren't no, there wasn't any, you know, medications to do anything. Now we have all these medications. Our life expectancy, age of death is 60 to 80 years of age. Men and women is different, some 60, some 70, it depends. What I'm concerned about, like she's concerned about when it comes to this 24, is are we giving an excuse mm -hmm. of a 16 to 24 year old, a 30 year old, to just do whatever they want? And we're seeing that in the news. We're seeing 17, 18, 19 year olds who should be responsible going out there killing people for a dollar, home, homeless people for a dollar. I talked about this last week. They're they're vandalizing. They're doing stupid things. They're getting drunk, as some of these pictures show, and um, they're underage drinking. They're just doing whatever they want. They're doing they're drinking freaking hand sanitizer to get high. Yeah, and they're killing themselves. Yeah, they're saying the brain stops maturing. It's not fully developed until 24. Um, in some cases, I can kind of see that in my own life because I had some weird. Things happened growing up where things, my body was trying to find that balance or whatever. But still, if you teach a child at a younger age how to properly grow, proper etiquette, and you know, etiquette and so on and Simple so forth, etiquette. Um, I think things can get a lot better. I think 
you know, we can capture... Instead of giving an excuse, this, uh, well, people don't grow up until they're 24, so we can just be idiots. And, and that's the thing. Um, but how many people from the ages of 18 to 30 are in, in positions of leadership, though? Not very many. Mm -mm. Um, I, I, I've argued about this and if they are, we've seen, before. but we and when they are, we have seen they are not doing a very good job. Yeah. Um, and how they got there, I want to know. I've seen so many times where what happens is is the over fifty crowd realizes they remember how dumb they were. I'm thirty one. Um, I'll be thirty two this year, right? Thirty two. Yes, oh Lord. Thirty two. <laughs> Anyway, remember, um, I'm exactly nine months younger than you. I don't even go there. But anyway, um, creepy thought. What concerns me, and you made me lose my train of thought when I did that. Uh, but anyway, you're the one who screamed. Yeah, I screamed. I lost my train of thought. Why? The older generations remembers, and I can do this. I'm 31. I'm thinking about when I was 16, 17. Would I want to put someone in charge as assistant manager at a grocery store at age 17? I've seen it happen. I've seen it at, you know, McDonald's and all these other places. In some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. And I realize that when I get but older... more no than yes. I realize that when I finally get in the age 50, 60, 70, I want to give people opportunities that were younger than me that didn't have that opportunity. Because I realize if we want to actually make younger people be responsible, we have to force some of them into more higher levels of responsibility because some of them will fail and some of them will but succeed. Then, but when they fail, you they you have to show they, you have to hold but them then, accountable for their action and say holding this them is why this is why you will not be able to hold a higher standard a, a higher place in the work field if you don't get your act together, buddy. But here's the thing, educating <clears throat> a youth and educating a person to be able to withhold a structured job, a structured situation, because everybody knows my home story and being the vice president, student education. Me now. We got All a college is teaching about sex. I'm not porn. talking about how, just just but let how me are they going to get let an me, education? Let me explain. Let me explain. You gotta listen for a minute. I, I'm gonna get there. Here's how this works. I mean education, and she's probably thinking what what you may be thinking. I'm not talking about a school structure. I'm not talking about a college or university. I'm talking about parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, nephews, your family, your friends, your church. These are phrases we don't talk about anymore. What happened to the responsibility of the family to take care of the family? Right now I can point out many places where the family has failed to succeed in life. Like my own. There wasn't a father figure in my life because they were deadbeat dads. Or Addicts. abusive. Abusive. I've talked to a woman just recently online who says, I hate men because they've all been abusive to me and they all expect me just to sit at home all the time and I can't work. I said, well, why can't you find one where they'll let you work? Or better yet, can you find a man that you would feel satisfied with staying at home and he provides for you? And I had this dialogue and I got her to the point where she finally admitted it was the way he communicated with her. The way he actually physically opened his mouth and the actions he did. She hated sitting at home because all she would think about was the dumb crap he did the same day before he left. Or, or the day before, or the week, or month. Because she didn't have an outlet to process and get move on. And I mean, she had an outlet to process this information, but all, all she no, was... But she, she was stuck at home. Well, she wasn't just stuck at home. She, she had a car, she could go out, but she just couldn't work, and blah, blah, blah. But the problem is, men have failed to be in a leadership position, and the feminization of men is going to continually happen if this don't change. Speaking of some weird men issues... Oh, uh, Radical Islam, and I wanted to... This is our last article for the night, it's a doozy. Uh, yeah, this is going to take, for the rest of the show, um, this is more graphic content in a way, um, and depending on how it, it might make you vomit. We just told uh, you how Egypt. Weird. This is what Shiar Law wants to bring to the United States. Farewell intercourse. Husbands can have sex with dead wives. And branded a complete nonsense. Now here's the weird thing. The Egyptian law wants to create that you can have sex with your wife six up, hours after up she dies. Six hours after she's dead. However, it doesn't 
Say, uh, the, say it goes both but ways. But the Egyptian embassy in London claims that this is completely false, forbidden in Islam, and do not believe it can happen. So my question is, why in the world um, are they even proposing such a crazy nonsense? Uh, because somebody has probably done it. <laughs> And they, want, and they, and they like not, it, and they want to make it a law. Because so they it's not in the Shiar it. law, it's not in the Christian law, so where are they coming up with this weirdness? I'll tell you where it's going. It's satanic. There are people in America and across the globe that are selling black market films, snuff films, where people are creating necrophilia. That's what that is. It's in the Old Testament in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, where they talk about, do not have sex with things that are dead. Yeah. Because it conjures spirits. What are spirits? Demons. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, having sex with a dead item, you're, um, when a person dies, they lose control of their bodily functions. There's a lot of um, impurities and bacteria. All the negative and, stuff comes out of your body when you and die. And you can contract something. Let's just I have to say way. the most sickest thing I've ever said on the show. When I touched my almost dead mother's body, she actually had a film of liquid on her arm. And we were not supposed to touch her without gloves. Because they said it could absorb through your skin, mm -hmm. so I'd hate to let my genitalia. Well, and, it and working in the medical <laughs> and working in the medical field, I cl had to clean up dead bodies. And I will tell you, it I don't understand why somebody would even want to have sex with somebody who's dead because it is they start excreting uh, from every pore, um, from every orifice, things come out. Orifice. And. Um, <laughs> Like oh. Jeremy said, you need to wear protection. I mean, we had to suit up. We had to, I mean, we were there just to cleanse the body, just to clean it up because of the stuff coming out of it. And we prepared it to be, you know, for the family to view it before they, and then to get it ready to go to the funeral home where they'll embalm it and everything. It is uh, disgusting that somebody would even want to, and what is this called? What is this called when people want to have sex with the dead? Necrophilia. 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 And that is... Porn. People do that. We're going back to the porn studio. People do this as entertainment, too. They film this as entertainment. And it is against the law to do this. But yet, here we are trying to pass laws in Egypt. It's okay. I mean, how many times are people going to continually change what the definition of a Christian means, and that's what worries me. We keep changing this and changing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned that uh, we keep falling and falling into this situation where you know the Bible continually talks about don't have sex with the dead, don't do these things, don't be this way, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And too many people want to fall away from the wayside and say, oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's I mean, right. in, in the Old Testament, if you even touched a dead person or anything that was dead, you had to go away from everybody for so many days so that you could be cleansed. So you wouldn't infect them if, you, if that dead animal, dead person had any kind of disease on them. <clears throat> That's just, you know, I, 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 I'm concerned that... As we keep changing things, and like I said, having having the internet, uh, the Bible is going to keep getting uh, redefined, re and re evaluated to where you know the Bible doesn't mean much of anything. We're going to live in a world in the future where the Bible will be the Bible, but it won't have any of the original truth because we keep making these new versions. And I'm looking through some of these versions. I'm not even going to say what they are yet, but. Um, I'm concerned why I do a quick search for like sex with the dead and many of the versions don't even come up with anything. The New Life version doesn't say anything. The message. No. The message yes. doesn't say, I mean, yeah, the message has something, it splits the words up, sex and dead, but it doesn't have um, them all interconnected. And that's what concerns me. You can't do quick key phrases like this and find out that, oh yeah, um, but you have to read it, and it's no, and it's in, you know, Deuteronomy and Leviticus. So. What worries me is how many times are we going to keep changing truth? 
you know. Um, I don't understand, and I believe it's in Leviticus 18, where, uh, well, that's where all the laws are. Where all the law is, and I mean, here's the argument. I've talked to people about it. Um, they always want to redefine it. So, well, what about the verse about where, um, it's, it's, it's bad for man to shave? Because that's the first one they always go to with me. It's, oh, it's bad for man to shave. Uh, blah, blah blah blah. Eventually, what we're going to be doing here at the show is we're going to we're going to get more into the Bible because I realize a lot of people on JMC Live. Uh, we're going to have our we're going to have a separate program outside of JMC Live, outside of Eternal Flame News, where I'm just going to go into the Bible and show you what it says, face value, straight up. You can't um, you can't cover anything. You can't change the truth of what it is. But yeah, all of the uh, Leviticus 18 is about you know how to how how you treat yourself how you do things uh, don't defile your body with something that's dead um, don't have sex with animals so on and so forth verses 22 23 of, of 18 Leviticus but the list goes on and on um, it's interesting because verse 29 says whoever commits any of these abominations even their souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people and it's quite interesting though that that's not a applicable to today's standards you know uh, we got all these programs and shows promoting all this information and this straight up filth I mean it, it's it's concerning me that uh, too many times nobody wants to do it looks, well, well Jeremy you're shaved so well, because you're shaved you, you defile yourself so, okay I'll give you that I've defiled myself because I've shaved because the book of Leviticus says that Miranda can't say it but as me being a man everybody wants to point that out well you've shaved you shouldn't cut your hair and all that but yeah I have but the Bible is straight up the Bible and I realize I think the majority of the people I've met since I moved to Ohio does not know half the Bible I only know about five or six people that I've personally interacted with with well over five hours of verbal communication that knows the Bible and that concerns me and a lot of the people I know are in leadership positions in churches or in organizations and so on and so forth and they don't have fundamental history of the Bible. Miranda, what do you think about this? Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I think you've said it all. Wow, you think I've said it all. Well, I think this is the end of Eternal Flame News for tonight. We will be on air tomorrow. We have the preview video already ready for you guys to see what's coming up tomorrow. What are we covering tomorrow, Miranda? It's going to be... Uh, well, it's going to be a show that... Uh, a lot of end time prophecy. Yeah, um... We're going to talk about Tim Tebow. We're going to talk about Internet Evangelism Day. Uh, what was the world record breaking number one tour of all time? All time. All time. You'll find out the number one world breaking and record. And it wasn't. And it wasn't Michael Jackson. Um, you'll find out about married couples. More dangers about pornography. And like she said, end time prophecy for Iran, Canada, and more about. The Mark of the Beast. That'll be tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern at JMC Live. I am Jeremy Caverly. This is... Miranda Caverly. This has been Eternal Flame News. We'll see you tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern, JMC Live. JMCLive.com. God bless.